Good morning, Jamming Jellies, and welcome to another episode of our Summer Kids Club. Today, we are going to be learning all about some of the animals that we have here at the aquarium, and we're going to be learning through counting. So I hope everyone is ready to count today. We're going to get our counting fingers ready. First of all, my name is Olivia. I'm an educator here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. And I am joined today here in the studio with my friend Ty, who is going to help us out change some of the pictures and the videos right behind me. So we are going to explore lots and lots of different animals today. And if you make any observations today that you'd like to share, feel free to text us. Um, we're going to put the number up right below, so you're welcome to text us at any time during the program today. So if you're watching us live, um, it's Thursday morning at 9 a.m., you're welcome to text us at 562-286-1838. And if you are not watching live, totally fine. We'd still love to hear from you. Or if you have any um, longer questions, you're welcome to email us down below. So we have our email. It's going to be live at lbaop.org. So feel free to either text us if you're watching live or email us if you're watching after if you have any longer questions. But we are going to go ahead and get started. And I want us to take a look right now. We, right behind me, we have our tropical exhibit. So we're going to go ahead and take a look and make some observations about some of the animals that we see. Hmm, do we see lots of different types of animals? Or maybe just a little bit of different animals? See lots of things swimming around. We're going to also look at some of the behaviors. So we'd like to make lots of observations or maybe notice some things. So notice the different colors and behaviors. And if you have any questions or any I wonders, again, you're welcome to text us in. So I see lots and lots of different species. We have some, some fish like right here. This one looks a little bit different. I see a ray up in the corner, oop, right behind me and my head over my head. Ooh, and I see a shark here. So lots and lots of different animals that we have here. So we are gonna go ahead and take a look at them. We also have some coral. Now coral is also an animal. So lots of different animals. Now when we're counting, we usually when we start counting, what number do we start with? I would start with one. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first animal. Ooh. So what are we looking at? Hmm. Looks green. Looks like it maybe has some flippers. I see its head and some blue for the water. This is a green sea turtle. And we have one green sea turtle hanging out here with us today. Now green sea turtles are very cool. There are seven different species of sea turtles. And the way that we are able to tell that this is a green sea turtle is based on the number of scoots that they have right behind their eye. So all of these patterns, like right here and that they have on their shell, and right over here are called scoots. And so these green sea turtles have four. So there's one, two, three, and four. So that's how we're going to be able to tell if it's a green sea turtle. They also have some scoots on their back, all along on their shell, and all along on their flippers. So we are going to take a look at a green sea turtle, maybe swimming through the water and I want us to see, ooh, that's a beautiful video, how they use their flippers. Hmm. Do they use their flippers kind of like, ooh, I see it, one fish right behind them too. Look at that one fish. So we have one green sea turtle and one fish. And I think we also have one diver hanging out in the back and I think we might have another. So two divers hanging out with this green sea turtle. But how are they swimming? They like to do an up and down motion. So kind of like this, almost like a bird. So if everyone can show me their up and down flipper movement like this, then you'll notice that they use their back flippers more so for steering. So as they're swimming through the water like this, they'll use their back flippers to steer. Very cool. And then we can see, of course, right there, their scoots behind their eyes. So when the video starts again, you can count the number of scoots. And that's how we know we're looking at a green sea turtle. So very cool. So that's going to be our first. Ooh, there it is. Another one. Awesome. We are also going to take another look. So after the number one, what number comes next? Hmm. I would say the number two. So we're going to take a look at our next animal. 
All right. Ooh, so we see we have two animals here, but what are they? Hmm. Does anyone know? Feel free again to text us in if you have any idea or any observations that you'd like to make. So we have two animals here. So there's our first one and there's our second one. So let's try to figure out what we are looking at. So it looks like they have some feathers instead of maybe fur. They have feathers. Hmm. What colors are they or what colors do we notice? I see black and I see white on both of them. Black and white on both of them. Hmm. I also see some like yellow right here and maybe some orange. Maybe another little bit of oop, yellow or gold kind of color right there. So they have two main colors on their whole body and then they have two colors right here. This is their mouth. It looks like a beak to me. So they have feathers and they have a beak. I would say that these are going to be a type of bird. They are a type of bird that we have here at the aquarium. These ones are called horned puffins. So they are one of our diving birds here at the aquarium. Ooh, that is a nice video that we have. Ooh, we see them swimming through the water and coming right on up. Now, how many flippers do they have? Let's let's look at, oop, <laughs> it's gonna start again. Maybe the next time they're swimming at the top, we can count how many flippers they have. So there they go swimming and they sw fly through the water. Now they are black and white in color, so they may remind us of penguins. But the main difference between these puffins and penguins are going to be that these can fly. So penguins cannot fly out of the water, but these guys can. So we have, look at their flippers. They have one, oops, let's see this one, one and two, two flippers. And there they go flying through the water, but they can also fly through the air, unlike our penguins. Now these puffins are not going to be local here in Southern California. They are found in much colder water, so up more towards Northern California. We can also see this is the actual exhibit that we have here at the aquarium. There's lots of rocks behind them. So they enjoy a nice rocky cold water habitat. So those are some of our horned puffins. I think these ones right here are our tufted puffins. So the horn puffin pictures that we were looking at, you see they almost have little horns like right behind their eyes. Yeah, right here. So they have these little like horns right behind their eyes. But for the other videos, our tufted penguins, or I'm sorry, our tufted puffins, they have little tufts of feathers right behind there, going right behind like eyebrows, right behind their eyes. So those are gonna be the differences between those two. So we had a chance to see our one green sea turtle and our two horned puffins. So which numbers do you think are gonna come next? Hmm. Let's take a look at maybe three. Ooh, now these may look familiar to you. Lots of folks say they have seen these animals before or have heard of them. Let's count how many we have. So we have one, two, and three at the very bottom, kind of hiding. Now what animals are we looking at or what type of fish are we looking at? Hmm. Now I've heard they tell some pretty funny jokes. These are gonna be our clownfish. You may have heard of them from Finding Nemo. So these are our clownfish. Now what are they swimming in? Or what does it look like is right below them? Anyone have any ideas? All that green and kind of purple color. Those are, that is, our, I'm sorry, that is a sea anemone. Now everyone say that with me sea anemone, kind of a big word. And these guys, call, though the clownfish, call that sea anemone their home. Now, wait a minute. You may be thinking, don't anemones sting? Yeah, anemones do sting. They are very closely related to jellies, so they do have the ability to sting. Hmm. If the anemones can sting, how come the clownfish live in them? How do they call them home? Anyone have any guesses? Anyone think they might know how the clownfish are able to live in the anemone? Hmm. 
Well, these clownfish, kind of like some other animals, have a thick layer of slime all over their body. Not the kind of slime we play with at home, but a different type of slime, and their layer of slime is really, really thick, and it helps protect them so they are able to swim in the anemones. So it's very cool. They are able to live in them, and because the anemones sting, it helps protect the clownfish from any other animals that maybe can't swim in the anemones. So the clownfish help the anemones because they might eat any food that the anemone leaves behind. And in return, the anemone provides a home for them and provides protection. Now that is what's called a symbiotic relationship. Big word, so if you can say it with me, symbiotic relationship. Awesome, so very big word. It means that they rely on one another to live. Now, well, what else are we noticing about our clownfish? Like their colors. Lots and lots of orange. Lots and lots of orange. And what else? I see, hmm, some white, maybe some white stripes. This one in the middle has one, two, and three stripes. So three stripes for our three clownfish. Awesome. So we went over our one green sea turtle, our two horn puffins, and now our three clownfish that live in the anemone. Let's take a look at number four. Whoa. Now to me, that doesn't look like four different animals. What do you think? That just looks like a lot of the same one animal. Hmm. Ooh, perfect. We are going to take a look at what this animal has four of though. So what does it look like this animal might have four of? And remember, you can text us in, so feel free to text us any observations, but what does it look like this animal has four of? Hmm, I see one, two, three, four of these almost like U-shaped, almost flower petal looking things. Does anyone know what those are? Those are going to be the jelly stomach. Now, I don't think I mentioned this. These are jellies. So these are going to be our moon jellies. And we actually have moon jellies here at the aquarium that you can touch. Yep, they're safe to touch. But they do have the four stomachs. And when you're here and you're able to touch them, if you come to visit the aquarium, you can go ahead and take a look at them and count their stomachs. Now, four stomachs seems like a lot. Do we have four stomachs? Hmm. No, we only have one. I wish we had four. If we had four stomachs, what would you use your four stomachs for? I would use one of them for breakfast, one of them for lunch, one of them for dinner, and the fourth one for ice cream. I love ice cream. So my fourth stomach would be only for ice cream. What would you use yours for? Maybe the same? Maybe something different? Let me know. So one, two, three four stomachs. Now I said here at the aquarium you can touch these moon jellies. Why do we think that you might be able to touch the moon jellies? They do have the ability to sting, so why would we be able to touch them here? Well for these moon jellies, their sting is so so small and our skin is so so strong that it doesn't hurt us. So when you do have the chance to touch them, you can be able to tell that they do in fact feel like jelly. Now, I think we have that video of them kind of swimming again. Maybe we can take a look at how they swim again. Let's see. If not, we can go ahead and we can pretend to be jellies, and we can show how we would swim. So jellies kind of do this with their belt. So I want everyone to do a little bit of a jelly swim. Awesome. So those are going to be how our jellies like to all right, so we did our one green sea turtle, two horn puffins, three clownfish, four jellies, and the jellies are related to like the anemones that we saw with our clownfish. Now we're going to take a look at number five. Ooh, very cool picture, but does this look like five of one animal? Mm, I don't think so. What does it look like we might have five of? Hmm. I see maybe one, two, oh, oh, over here, three, 
four, five arms. So if this has five arms, what do we think it is? What are we looking at? It looks like a sea star to me. Now, has anyone ever had a chance to see any sea stars in person or maybe had the chance to touch them? Hmm. Sea stars are very cool. They do have those five arms. And one really cool fact is that if a sea star loses one of its arms, it can actually grow it back. Now, that'd be kind of cool if we lost one of our arms, if we could just grow it back. If they, can, if they were to lose this arm, they would be able to grow it back over time. Now, we do have lots of different species of sea stars here at the aquarium. Maybe we can take a look at some of our different species that we have. This one right here is called a leather star, and they're one of my favorites because of the way they feel. But we might have some other sea stars here at the aquarium that we can take a look at. We might have one, um, a sun star or sunflower star, one of those two. Those are some of my favorites. Or we might have some bat stars. So we have lots of different sea stars here at the aquarium, lots of different species. We have our touch pool um, in our northern Pacific gallery where you can touch the sea stars. And now sea stars, oh, there is one. Awesome. Whoa, I know. I just mentioned these sea stars have five arms. This one? does not have five arms. It has way more than that. How many arms do you count? And what are those little wiggly things that you see on the bottom? Are we looking at the bottom? Are we looking at the top? Where are we looking? What is this sea star doing? The other star we were looking at from the top view. This one looks really different. Because this one we're looking at from underneath. Now let's count how many arms we see. Let's start right up here. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. It has eighteen arms. That's a whole lot of arms and that's a whole lot of help for them to be able to stick to things. So this one is sticking to a glass exhibit so we can look at its underside. And all these things that you see right here, now there's too many of them for us to count because there are a lot of them, but these are called their tube feet. And they use their tube feet to help them stick to rocks and walls. They also use their tube feet to help them bring food to their mouth. Now where do we think their mouth is? Does anyone see their mouth? might be a little difficult to see, but their mouth is right oh, past it, right there, right in the very center. So they're almost always sticking onto their mouth. They're sitting on their mouth, and they use those two feet to help bring food right into their mouth. And they can do this really cool thing, which might sound a little weird, but their whole stomach can leave their body. Ooh, it sounds gross. But their stomach comes out of their body, and it can cover the food that they want to eat. And then that's how they digest it. And then they bring it back into their body. So they use those two feet. And those two feet have like little suction cups on the very end. So it helps them. But this sea star has 18 of those arms. This one is going to be our sunflower star. So lots of different arms. A lot more than the other, the leather star that we were taking a look at. Yep, there's that leather star. We can even see on the leather star some of the tube feet there at the bottom. And those tube feet also help them move. So I wonder if we have a video where we can see one of our sea stars moving. Because it's a really interesting to watch. They kind of pick up, they can push water through their tube feet and they pick up their tube feet one by one and they're able to kind of move themselves. It reminds me a little bit of a moonwalk. So they slowly travel. So we'll see if we can have a video because of them use extending their tube feet and kind of bringing it back in back and forth. Ooh, there we go. So those are their tube feet. So you can see that one came up off the, the rock and you can really tell that they look like little tubes with little suction cups on the end. So we'll go ahead and watch that one move. So that's going to be, this is one of our bat stars. This is the underside we're looking at. 
and then this down here is the top part. And over here is going to be kind of where their stomach would be. Look, over here you can see their little tube feet wiggling. They have lots of tube feet underneath that they use. And that's how they travel. That's how they're going to move around. And that's how they're going to bring their food into their mouth. Awesome. And these sea stars are going to be a tide pool animal. So we looked at a couple of different animals, but these are going to be animals that live in a tide pool. So sometimes in tide pools, there's lots of water, and sometimes there's not a lot of water. So as the water is kind of moving in and out, it helps these sea stars that they're able to sort of cling to rocks. Awesome. So we saw our one green sea turtle, our two horn puffins, our three clownfish, the four stomachs on our jellies, and the four, or I'm sorry, the five arms and sometimes 18 arms on some of our sea stars. But what comes after five? Mm, I would say six. Ooh, so this is going to be our animal that we're looking at for number six. Now, what are we looking at? It looks like a whole lot of rock to me. I'm not quite sure if I see six of anything. Hmm. This is interesting. Does anyone know what we are looking at? Anyone want to share? Again, you're welcome to text us in down at the number below, 562-286. 1838. Let us know what you think we're looking at. Hmm. Maybe I think I think I might be able to point it out. I see maybe this one. Oh, I see some circle over here. Two. Uh three. Four. Five. And six. But what are they? We see have six circles now. What are they? They sort of blend into that rock. These animals are called a limpet. Now, limpet, I think, is a fun word, so we're going to say it all together. Limpet. Awesome. Limpets are a type of snail. Hmm. They don't really look much like a snail, but they have that hard shell on top because they're covering their very soft body underneath. So they're a type of snail. They really blend in well to those rocks, though. Limpets are also going to be found in tide pools, just like the sea stars we were looking at. So just like the sea stars, we were talking about how the tide pool, where the water kind of moves in and out. And sometimes there's lots of water, and sometimes there's no water. These limpets can kind of store water in their shell. So when there's not a lot of water, they'll at least have some of the water that they can store in their shell. They also can stick really, really well to the rock which helps them as the water's moving in and out. So we have our six limpets. Now wait, I was saying it was really difficult to kind of tell what it w we were looking at at first. They use their color to really blend in well to that rock. Now you might know what it's called, so if you know what it's called, feel free to text this in. But what is it when animals use their color to blend into their surroundings? Anyone want to share? Hmm. Has anyone heard of the word camouflage before? Maybe you have, maybe you have not. But these animals use camouflage to help blend into that rock behind them or that they're sitting on top of. So they are sort of that light gray, white, brown color, sort of like the rock, and that's going to help them blend in. And lots of different animals will use their camouflage to help blend into their surroundings. Awesome. So we had a chance to see our one green sea turtle, our two horn puffins, our three clownfish, the four stomachs on our jelly, the five arms on our sea star, and now our six limpets. We're gonna take a look at number seven next. Awesome. Hmm, number seven. This looks like one animal, not seven. So what do we think we are looking at for this animal? Does anyone count seven of anything on this animal? First of all, what is this animal? What are we looking at? What does it look like to you? This is a black tip reef shark. Awesome. So we are going to take a look to see what we might have seven of. Hmm. Do we have seven eyes on our black tip reef shark? No. Do we have seven mouths? No. 
Hmm. How about seven of these guys? Seven pins. Let's see. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven. We do have seven fins on our black tip reef shark. Now, I have a stuffy of a shark that's not a black tip reef shark, but very similar. So we're going to go ahead and count our fins again. Now, for this, we are not going to be counting the tail. We're just going to be counting the fins on the main part of the body. So we have our one, two, three on the top, four, five, seven. Seven fins. Very cool. Now, what else can we count on this animal? So we counted our, let's see, the eyes. Let's see. We have one eye here. We can't see the other one, but there's going to be another eye on the other side. The one mouth on our black tip reef shark. And what about these? Does anyone happen to see these right here? Those are going to be their gills. Now, these sharks, these black tip reef sharks, have five gills. It might be a little hard to count in this picture. Let's see. One, two, three, four, and then another five one. So they have five gills that they use to help them breathe. We might have another picture of maybe a different shark or maybe the same shark and we can take a look at maybe it has a better image of those gills. Let's see. Hmm. We had the seven fins and our gills on the side that help them breathe. Now, when we breathe, we just use our lungs. So we can go, if any, everyone wants to take a deep breath with me, we can just breathe using our lungs. But we can't breathe underwater. Ooh, there we go. Ooh, this is a different shark that has, we can see their five gills. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. So they need their gills to help bring the water over their gills that way they can get the air from the water, the oxygen from the water for them to breathe. Now, if we wanted to breathe underwater, we would probably have to be scuba divers. We'd have to put on all our gear and use oxygen to help us breathe. They have their gills to help them do just that. Awesome. So let's see. We went over our one green sea turtle, our two horn puffins, our three clownfish, the four stomachs on the jelly, the five arms on our sea stars, the six limpets, and the seven big fins on our sharks. Now, what do we think eight is going to be? Hmm. Let's see what eight might be. <gasps> One of my favorites. It's an octopus. An octopus. And eight is octopus because they have eight arms. So let's go ahead and count these arms. One, two, three, Ooh, there's one hiding right there, four, five, six, seven, and eight, right there. So they have eight arms, and they are really wiggly, so they use their arms. If everyone wants to be an octopus, kind of wiggle your arms with me. Now, we don't have eight of them, but we can wiggle our two arms, but they are really wiggly, and they use all of their arms. And on all of their arms, you'll notice these big circle things. Now, we can't count all of these because there are a lot. But these are their suction cups. So they'll use them to kind of suction into rocks and walls, kind of like the sea stars we were talking about earlier, have little suction cups on the end of their tube feet. So that is going to be our number eight, is going to be our octopus. So that is a beautiful picture of our giant Pacific octopus with their eight arms. Awesome. Now, we are running out of time for today, but we had a chance to see a lot of different animals and count lots of different things. So we had our one green sea turtle with the four scoots behind their eye, our two horned puffins, our three clownfish with their three stripes, four jellies, I'm sorry, four of the stomachs on our jellies, five arms on our sea stars, our six limpets, seven fins on our black tip reef shark, and the eight arms on our octopus. So lots of different exploring today. Now, if you would like to continue your exploration, we do have activities at home for you on our website that you're welcome to download and do on your own time. But thank you so much for joining today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.